So let's look into chapter number two, static NAT. So let's look into the static NAT implementation. The definition of static NAT. A static NAT is a private IP address is mapped to a fixed public IP address. Okay, so remember internal, there's one private IP mapped into external one public IP. Then we also have a definition of bi-directional access. When an internal host with a private IP address access the internet, the egress NAT device, which is the egress, which is this part here, is translate the private IP address into public IP address. So when you do the NAT on this router, this part here, the interface on the egress will actually do the translation. Similarly, when an external network device send packet to an internal network, the NAT translate the public address carry in the packet into the private address. So there are two directions here. One is from your private going outside. So this is one way. So you are doing a translation from private into public. Another side here is that from outside going into inside. So again, you are going to translate from a public into a private. In this example, you can see I have a translation. 192.168.1.1 is being mapped into 122.1.2.1. So this is a public IP I have. Then I have another IP, which is 192.168.1.2 being mapped to 122.122. And number three here, map to number three. Again, this is very important that you have the public IP address pool. Remember a few slides earlier on, I mentioned that you need to have owned the public IP address and you need to get it from IANA. All right, so assuming that these are the public IP address that is being assigned to you so that you can use this uh, range of IP address. So here we look into the mechanism on how NAT work. So we have two examples. Let's have a look in more detail. So on the first step, we have the source of 192.168.1.1 and uh, this IP want to access to 200.1.2.3, which is this web server. Now I want you to take a very close look into the source IP. 192.168.1.1 is being translated to 122.2.1. What you can see from here, this is a public IP. Of course that the 200 is also a public. So what is being translated is this part here. So as you can see here, the source from private is being translated into the public. And uh, let's look into step number three. As you can see that step number three, the source now is 200, one, two, three, because now you are actually replying to the net router. And you can see that the destination is one, two, two, one, two, one. So when step number three here happened, the packet reached to NAT, uh, what the NAT does is that it's actually translate back into 192.168.1.1. So this is where you are doing an egress traffic. What if I have the internal, which is have, I have a resource here, which is 192.168.1.3 is my internal resource that I have an external host here who want to go into your internal resource here. So for the second example here, you can see that step number one, the source IP is a public IP, 202.123, and I'm going to 122.1.2.3. Both of these also are public IP. When it reach into the uh, NAT server, which is here, this is my NAT server, it will actually do a translation. Look into this translation. The destination of 122.123 is being translated into 192.168.1.3. Similarly, when this host reply, as you can see that original host is a private, and when it pass through the NAT, 
this private IP address is being translated into a public IP address 122.123. So we call this as a static NAT. Now the advantages of static NAT is for every single IP address internally, you will map into external IP address. So you are not saving IP address, but you are actually mapping and translating one to one. It is good if let's say in the network, you have some resources that you want to allow external to come to you. For example, here we have uh, 192.168.1.3 is a resource that's internal, but you do allow external host to access to